You must leave here. This castle is alive. Who's there? Do you wish to take your father's place? Come into the light. Show me the girl. Look at her. What if she is the one? <gasps> the one who'll break the spell. Hello. You can talk. Well, of course he can talk. Hello. Pleased to meet you. The Master's not as terrible as he appears. years old. The movie came out the year I was born in 1990 and I just fell in love with Belle. She was this feisty young woman who spoke her mind and had all of these ambitions and was incredibly independent and wanted to see the world and was so smart and I loved how she had this relationship with Beast where they were just toe to toe and um, that to me just seemed like such a dynamic and interesting kind of relationship that I'd never seen before in a fairy tale. I was just enamoured with the whole thing. I was just so in love. It was so funny and so romantic, but in a way that, I don't know, for me it didn't feel contrived in the same way that I think perhaps other fairy tales have in the sense that they, Beast and Belle really dislike each other at the beginning and they, they really don't get on and then they form this friendship and then they fall in love and that, there was just something so beautiful about that to me and I've just loved it ever since. As a child you love Disney but as an adult you still love Disney because it sort of connects you with that childlike feeling that everything is going to be okay and there's, there's hope in the world and um, it just sort of, for me, it just gives me this sense of like, ah, oh, everything's fine, everything's fine. So to get to be in, you know, playing Belle and, and to get to actually live in the world is, you know, it's just amazing. I was very excited. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a huge challenge turning a, you know, a, a 2D cartoon into a, into a sort of 3D uh, human story, I guess. And it's also a great story, it's a great character. Um, you know, it's one of the great characters from, from fairy tales, really. And um, I was very excited, my wife was very excited, my kids were very excited, so yeah. The music for it is, is sensational, and um, you know, one of the great things about the animated film was the, you know, the blend of, of romance and, and sort of classic fairy tale telling, as well as a bit of humour and, and fun. And, um, and that's something, I, you know, we've really tried to retain in this, is the sort of you know, the romantic side, but also a bit of the silliness. You know, I hope that we will do justice to, you know, the the love that people have for the animated film, but, you know, that people felt that we've, uh, you know, that we've taken it on, moved it on a bit, brought something fresh to it, brought a few new songs to it. I hope they like those. And, um, yeah, I hope that, you know, it's, uh, it, you know, it becomes another classic, really, that, that families enjoy and that, um, that kids enjoy and get them sort of engaged with the with the fairy tale again because it is a great it is one of the great fairy tales I think something that Bill and I were keen to sort of bring out was this sense of a, a sort of petulant spoilt child and and the sense of kind of entitledness um, that that led to his downfall really and um, and so that was quite fun just to kind of work into this this very short little montage almost entirely through the medium of dance uh, which is not something I've done a huge amount of before. Um, but that was really, really interesting to kind of introduce that element and then see that, th you know, through, threaded through the Beast's uh, story. Um, and, you know, to see him 
curse not just for you know having refused a rose but actually for for all his other traits that um that he could be damned for bill he seems to be having the time of his life he's the man who is perfect for the job he's passionate about telling the story and about honoring the work that had already been accomplished uh, in 1991 by uh, by the amazing team that, that created the original beauty and the beast but also bringing um, Bill's element and, 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 allow, and Bill's uh, been allowed to um, answer a lot of questions that weren't answered in the original animation that we can now do because we have a full film and a live action feature to do that. So um, coming on set and working with Bill every day has been a total joy and um, I wish this was a, a year long job uh, and not a three month one. I don't think it's gonna sink in completely until I actually see myself on the big screen, singing those songs, on the horse, with my sidekick, LeFou. Um, it's one of the most recognizable villains in Disney history. Um, and I've been privileged enough to be given the honor of bringing him to life with, um, with, with a, with a, in, in a human form. And so, it's magical. It's very exciting. I just hope people think I've got enough hair on my chest. Probably not. <laughs> I have not done much comedy in my career, um, not from the want of trying, and this was my chance to do it. And uh, I, I hadn't thought so much about how the the interaction would work with LeFou, and then I met Josh. And then I realized that whatever I had in mind that was going to be funny was only going to be emphasized and made better by having the likes of Josh in the scene with me and allowing me to bounce off his timing and him bouncing off my timing. And I think you will probably see that there's a lot of, we like each other and we really, we have had the best time. It's been just a wonderful experience on and off the screen. And I, but I think on the screen, I think you do notice, you'll see that this, this timing and this um, this compatriotism we have with each other um, started off the screen, and 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 so we've brought it onto the screen, and we've just had the best time. He's a very very funny man. He's a very happy man, and he brought a lot of light and warmth to to the film set, and also to the scenes. I think what he's done with LeFou is he's brought a much more three dimensional. Uh, character uh, to LeFou, somebody who has a heart, who thinks a little bit more, but is desperately uh, enamored by, by Gaston and uh, adores him in a way. And we've had a lot of fun playing those, those elements of his character with mine and my character with his. I remember going to a theater in South Florida and watching Beauty and the Beast for the first time. Uh, I think it was in 1991. And, uh, uh, the the memory that I have, other than the fact that I was watching something completely magical, was uh, Be Our Guest ended and the audience erupted into applause. And that was, at that time, a, a very unfamiliar response to going to see a movie. It was much more, you were much more likely to see that in live theater. And to elicit that kind of response from an audience, I thought was pretty am amazing. Uh, and something I, I definitely remember vividly. It's breathtaking. I mean, the, I, I, it's funny because every day we would come to set, the actors would look at each other and say, like, this is insane. The amount of labor, the amount of manpower that it takes to create just a scene you know, like this or anything. It's just, it calls upon every creative asset that you have at your disposal. And we had the the best of the best working on this from hair and makeup to production to the set designers to props. Everybody brought their A game and nobody left a an ounce of it behind. I mean, it's all on the screen and people slaved away to make sure that everything in the frame was beautiful and unlike anything you've ever seen before. To be a part of a movie that is so iconic for me and my own children now is also, um, it's a dream come true. I get to recreate 
many iconic moments and hopefully provide audiences with new uh, iconic moments as well. And while we're paying respect to a classic, I think in many ways we're setting out to to create a new classic at the same time. It really was the first modern Disney heroine, Disney princess, you know, um, who doesn't want to be a princess, who doesn't really care about finding the prince. You know, someone who's more interested in books and seeing the world and, exp and, and kind of fi figuring out who she is than in finding a guy and getting married. She happens to do those things by the end, but it's not because that's, that's her main interest, you know. So that was really, um, a, you know, a bit of a cultural leap, uh, certainly in the world of children's stories, you know. And I think that's what's so interesting now is that it's 25 years later, and it's often things that are slightly revolutionary become, you know, you, you sort of lose a sense of how groundbreaking they were because they were so influential that they just become part of the culture. How do you distinguish Belle again 25 years later um, in a live action way, you know, and I think that was that was so so much a part of the casting of Emma Watson, you know, because I do think of all the actresses her age, of her generation, she is the one who sort of most closely defined with women's issues, you know, her activism at the UN, but in general, it's really become her life's mission, you know. Um, so it was very exciting, I, I, you know, I remember writing her a note and kind of pointing out that, you know, choices that people, actors make in their careers sort of become part of their own autobiography, you know, and that this seemed to have such a great fit in her life that I was hoping she was interested. It turned out she was, had been interested for years, had been developing her own version of it, and um, what was then so exciting when she uh, got on board was to work together with her. Well, I think obviously, yes, there's a great relevance. Uh, Belle's position, you know, there's a great relevance in Belle and, and the treatment of Belle as a Disney heroine, you know, somebody who um, is not so interested in finding the prince, you know, more interested in developing herself and reading and figuring out what's going on in the world, you know. But also, I think that the, the general theme is one that was relevant then, it was relevant when, when the story was written in the 18th century, and it just keeps taking on new, new relevance. I think for us today, clearly a reminder that um, not that we shouldn't be be distracted by surface beauty and and everything that dazzles and that real beauty comes from within. I think um, you know we're living in another moment where I think that's that's a message worth worth imparting, especially to children. When Bell is leaning over the beast and says, I love you finally. I think you really, the challenge was again in a human way to make you think these two people, there's nobody else for either of them, you know? And what that meant was it really was an exploration of how, when Belle is walking through that town in that first scene, how did she get there? And I'm not saying we added stuff before that, but as the movie progresses, you understand what it is that led her and her father there, and also what it is that makes her feel like such an outsider. And the same with the prince, not just, boy, he was nasty that one night, but what turned him into that man who deserved to be cursed, you know? So those are the kinds of things that we fill in in, in, the, in the film, and that's what excited me about doing it. Well, I think it was my love of the animated film. I saw it in 1991, I was already in my 20s, you know, I, I know it means a lot to people who see it when they're a kid, but even at that age, I just thought it was the most beautiful and kind of perfect movie. The question becomes, why remake something that's perfect? You know, that's a whole other thing. But I think it was, my love of that film, I think it's, um, dramatically, it's so powerful, you know? And I think we, all of us, feel like the beast at some point or another, you know? So I think that's a way that I certainly connected to it, you know, and, and the great kind of uh, resolution of it, you know, the fact that he finds kind of the way to his, his own humanity, I think is such a beautiful, beautiful story.